everybody, good afternoon and welcome back to Mad Horse Barbecue. My name is Brian and in today's video we're going to be firing up my Gateway Drum Smoker yet again. Absolutely love barrel style cooking and ever since I bought this Gateway, um, two things. One, I love it and two, I want another one or another two or another three. Um, I'm getting into next weekend, I'm, I got my first ever uh, KCBS event and I'm doing, I'm cooking all on... Well, I'm, I'm doing all barrel style cooking. Basically, I'm using the, the gateway for the ribs. I'm going to use Oklahoma Joe's Bronco Pro for the chicken. I'm going to use my 22-inch Weber Smoky Mountain for the uh, pork shoulder. And then I'm going to use the 18-inch 18 Weber, 18 Weber Smoky Mountain for the brisket. Uh, so, you know, they're all barrel style. I think barrel style, you know, you get a lot of good flavor with the fat, you know, dripping down onto the hot coals and then, come, you know, kind of coming back up. But uh, today, you know, tri-tip on the gateway. We're going to hang it. It's going to be super easy. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a tri-tip. Tri-tip's a cool piece of meat. Um, you know, obviously the grain runs two different directions, which I'll show you that uh, when I season it up. But it's been really hard to find around here ever since, you know, meat prices kind of skyrocketed. Um, ooh, excuse me, my mullet's just blowing in the wind. Um, but anyways, enough about the mullet and uh, enough about, you know, enough, you know, just enough talking. So let's take you in. Let's get this gateway fired up and then I'll bring you inside. We'll get the meat seasoned up. So come on in. All right, guys, first things first, using Blue's Hog uh, Natural Lump Charcoal. Uh, as of right now, it is my favorite charcoal. They, they just had this on sale uh, at Ace Hardware for, I think it was like six or seven bucks off a bag. Ended up going on the website, buying 10 bags, having it shipped to my store for free. Uh, and that's what I'm using for all my comps, uh, for all my comp meats is a Blue's Hog uh, Lump Charcoal. But you can see we've got about a half a basket. Just because this cook is probably only going to be an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops, just because tri-tips aren't that big. But you can see I got uh, a half a basket full of coal. And I got a wax cube in there, so let's get it in the barrel and get it lit up. And then it, I don't know if you can see it at the bottom, but uh, you know it, it appears to be oil dry. It's actually not oil dry because I'm having a hard time finding that around here for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, this is actually um, just clay, clay, uh, scent-free or fragrance-free kitty litter is all this is. So there's no added chemicals. It's just clay kitty litter. Uh, it essentially works the same as the oil dry, and it's super cheap. It's like three bucks for a 20-pound bag, but. The concept behind this, um, and I do this in my Oklahoma Joe's Bronco Pro as well, is you put that in there so when you're putting, you know, when you're hanging meat and when you're cooking meat, all that grease gets down there and it just, you know, it soaks up in there. So every three or four cooks, I'll just take my vacuum cleaner and I'll vacuum this all out and there's no hardened grease in the bottom of the barrel. So let's go ahead and take the basket, throw the basket in, go ahead and light it up. And I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes and uh, we'll pick back up and we'll close this thing down. All right, so here's the tri-tip. Uh, I did a little bit of trimming on it, um, and I don't know if the camera can pick up on this, uh, but you know, the, I believe the reason why they call it a tri-tip is because there's three tips. You know, there's your tip here, tip here, tip here, three tips, tri is three. Uh, but the unique thing about these is the grain runs two different ways, and this one's not as, um, there's not much of a grain change as I've seen in other tri-tips, but you can see it starts Pretty much just going horizontal with the meat, and then as it gets closer to the center, it kind of starts a little vertical. So what I'll probably do, and this is done cooking, is I'll probably just cut it right here, and I'll cut this piece like that, and then I'll cut this piece like that. And if you have a, um, you know, if you're worried about forgetting what way the grain runs after you get the rub on, uh, I would just watch, um, you know, one of Bradley's videos over at Chuds Barbecue. Just take a picture of it. That's what I did. I took a picture of it right here. That way I know when I bring it off, you know, I got my wide point here, the grain runs this way. Got the narrow point here, the grain runs this way. It's a, you know, a really good point. Well, I've been saying point a lot. But, uh, you know, really good and easy tip so you don't get your cuts messed up. So, uh, really easy to get this thing prepped up. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little binder of the uh, Lee and Perrine's W sauce, put it on both sides, uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and go on with the, uh, the Suckle Busters Camp Player Steak Seasoning. This is my favorite. Uh, steak seasoning. You know, I've been doing a lot of double rubs or triple rubs uh, on meat, but uh, when it comes to steak, uh, this Suckle Busters Campfire Steak is my favorite. So let's just go ahead and do that. That's going to be good. So then the next step is, is I'm going to go ahead and just take one of the hooks. I'm going to put the hook uh, in the narrow end just so the more meaty end is towards the heat. So probably go, I don't know, two, three inches down, stick it right through the meat. And it's gonna hang uh, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing sit out on the countertop and uh, let's go outside and get the grill uh, closed down. Now that the grill coals are going, uh, both intakes are open. So I'll just go ahead and throw the lid on, open up the exhaust, and then we're gonna let this thing come up. Uh, open up the exhaust, and we're gonna let this thing come up to about 300 degrees. Uh, probably shoot for the plus side of 300 because I wanna try to get a little bit of 
you know, a little bit of sizzle, a little bit of sear on it. Well, not sear, but I just, I don't want to slow smoke this. You know, it's a small cut of meat. It's not going to take long. Uh, so I want to put it in here. I want to let it go at a somewhat high heat um, in terms to smoking meat in 300 to high heat uh, when it comes to smoking stuff. So uh, we'll let this thing come up to temp and uh, we'll be picking back up when we're putting the tri-tip on. All right, drums up the temp, uh, needle straight up, right at 300 degrees. I'm probably gonna let it creep up, probably to about 325-ish uh, for this cook, because I want to cook it a little hotter. But uh, anyways, it's time to throw the meat on, so let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm gonna do is I just got a little chunk of uh, hickory here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right on top of the coals. And by the coals, I mean, I put it like right dead center, uh, right on the lit coals, just because I want to get this thing smoking, and I just want to get a little bit of smoke on it. You know, want it to burn and get a little bit of smoke on it right away. But go ahead and take try tip. And seems like a good spot. So to hang it right there, and then close this thing down. And I'm gonna set a timer for uh, 20 minutes, and uh, we are gonna come and check on this. It's not gonna be done in 20 minutes, at least I don't think it's gonna be done in 20 minutes. But um, when it comes to tri-tip, I tri-tip and beef tenderloin. I'm a fan of medium. Um, but you know, beef tenderloin, you get the filet mignon. Filet mignon's medium rare all day. But when it comes to these. I don't know what you want to call them, beef roasts. I guess you can maybe classify them as, kind of. Uh, I like them more of a medium. So we're going to be cooking this thing probably to about 135 today and then wrapping it and letting it rest and we'll carry over probably to a good medium temp. But anyways, leave this thing go for 20 minutes and we'll pick back up. All right, we are 20 minutes in. Go ahead and take a quick peek. I'm not going to be anywhere near done, but I just want to give you a progress report. 20 minutes hanging on the drum. Go ahead and take a probe temp. Sitting at about 90 degrees, so... We'll go ahead just move it over here colds are a little hotter close this thing down and probably let it go for about another 20 minutes so we will see you then all right we are 40 minutes in go ahead and take a peek at it again and this time i'm actually just going to pull it off for a sec put it on a tray you can see it's starting to sweat a little bit it's pretty deep in color i just want to get an overall temp reading i can tell just by the way that feels it's got a you know a little bit to go yet but let's go ahead and take the internal Oh, come on. Sitting at about 108. So actually what I'm going to do now, throw it back on. I actually think to finish this cook off, I'm just going to go ahead and open these vents up all the way. And really let this thing get nice and hot. Try to get some good, uh, you know, some good sizzle action on the outside of that. And uh, try to get a little bit of a, you know, a crust one could say on it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this thing down. And uh, I'll probably be checking it here on out like every 10 minutes. Just because I don't want to take it past... You know, 135 really, because I, I'm going to wrap it in foil and let it rest for a while. And there's nothing worse than an overdone piece of meat, especially beef, I think. It's just like chewing on leather. So, like I said, you can see I opened the vents up all the way, let it finish off that way. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably be checking back in one more time when we're slicing into it. Or maybe we'll check back out out here. You know, like always, I really don't have a, a script or a plan when it comes to these cooks. But um, check back in in a little bit. All right, we are back. Uh, first things first, the tri-tip is ready to cut into, but I got to, got to, got to give my guy John over at uh, Hiawatha Woodworks a quick shout out. Uh, I got a new board from him because I am a brand ambassador from him. And this board right here is a 15 by 20, uh, two inch, two inches thick. And this is the Shag Bark Hickory. And if you would just take a peek at how pretty this damn board is. I said damn, I don't say damn a lot on my channel, but I am a big fan of the work that John does over at Hiawatha Woodworks. Um, just, I mean, you can see he got his, you know, his sign there. You know, he's got my Mad Horse logo there. He's got another one for him right there. And it's just, man, this, this Shag, I, I can't remember the name of it, Shag Bark Hickory is just so dang cool. And another thing that's really neat, too, is these boards are heavy, obviously, because they're two inches thick. But he's got little handles, or big handles on the side, so you can kind of stick your fingers in there. And it makes it really easy to uh, lift up. And then what's also cool is it's, you know, it's a cutting board, so cutting boards have two sides. Is uh, He's kind of thinking really good here, and on this side is the juice trough side. So we're going to cut this tri-tip tonight on this juice trough side, because if I get it right, the tri-tip should be juicy. And uh, these are extra deep juice, juice troughs. And, uh, you know, just to go over one thing, when you buy some cutting boards from a store, you get boards with juice troughs in them, and they kind of look, well, here's one, they kind of look like that. So you can kind of be cutting your meat and everything's going good and you're eating dinner and it, you know, there's a little spot for the juice to come out and then all of a sudden you hear something either dripping on the countertop or dripping on the floor and it's just the juice trough so damn small, uh, the juice doesn't stay in it. But I tell you what, this could probably hold, well, I bet you could hold the whole bush light, not that I'm going to do it, 
But uh, again, really good idea. You know, it's got a spot for the juice to drain. So when I am done, I can kind of just tilt the board over and drain it into a cup. Or if my girlfriend likes me to do, just put it into the sink. Um, but anyways, again, he out the woodworks there. Let's go ahead and get the tri-tip out and let's slice into it. All right, let's go ahead and get this out of the foil. Just like that. And just uh, one more thing too, uh, before I slice into this, but I am a brand ambassador uh, for Hiawatha Woodworks. So you can actually save 20% uh, on anything on his webpage. And I'll link his webpage in the description. If you use the code MADHORSE20, that's capital M, capital H, MADHORSE20. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. Everybody seems to be making noise right now. Uh, but again, with lumber costs the way they are right now, I think 20% off on a nice custom cutting board is like phenomenal. But let's go ahead and cut into this tri-tip and uh, see what we got. So again, I took my picture so I know uh, where I got to cut this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to cut it right here because the grain runs this way and then it kind of makes its way this way. So I'm going to cut it right here first. See what we got. Yeah, I'd say that's medium-ish. But, uh, you know, these pieces uh, right here are just going to get kind of get cut just like this. So let's go ahead and cut into it. If you hear that grunting in the background, my son is in his booster seat taking a big old dump. And let's go ahead and turn this one and cut this against the grain. Well, let's go ahead and try a piece right here. Let's take a slice right off. Nice and juicy. I think you got a good medium. Feels nice and loose. So let's go ahead and take a piece of it and try it. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, the taste you get from hanging a piece of meat like this over the coals, and then when all that juice just kind of, you know, drips onto the hot coals and comes back up into the meat is just absolutely. I gotta try another piece real quick. Tenders can be blue salt gum charcoal. Absolutely phenomenal. You can see the juice I got on this board. Let's just push it over into the juice trough. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's pretty damn cool. So now besides that, uh, I got nothing else. I uh, hope you guys and girls enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, shoot me a thumbs up. Um, you know, leave me a comment. You know, make sure you subscribe because I am a guy who uh, likes to smoke meat, likes to buy grills, and uh, <laughs> like to drink bush light. So now I'm going to sign off. You guys and girls have a good night, and we will see you next time.